Hello everybody, this is uh, Jason, a.k.a. Fresno J. Uh, I'm going to show you quick, sorry it's taking me so long to uh, get this thrust tube video out there. This is how you uh, install a thrust tube on a Dynam Meteor to reduce the exit size down to what is uh, more commonly accepted as uh, around 55 millimeters. Gives you a good compromise between thrust and uh, exit velocity, a.k.a. E-flux. Uh, give you a quick view. This is my pre-done setup thrust tube made out of post board. You see the inside is shiny. I always prefer to use the inside, the shiny part as the inside of the thrust tube. And as it produces, you know, creates less drag, makes a little slicker surface to flow through. Usually I use painter's tape on the outside to hold the thrust tube and Scotch tape, but as you can see, I ran out of scotch tape, hence the piece of electrical tape. This is the tail cone for the Meteor, the stock tail cone. As you can see, I added a Depron centering ring inside the tailpiece in order to assist in centering the thrust cone. Uh, there have been issues where thrust cones come out of center, cause thrust alignment issues, and uh, tend to really adversely affect how the aircraft handles. Now, for those of you who already have installed the thrust ring or the tail cone on the plane, no worries. I will show you how to handle that one a little later on. Now, real quick, basically all I do with this is I slide it in through the opening if you've already constructed it. Now, in order for the fan unit to sit flush inside the airframe with the, the new thrust cone, one of the things that you need to do is you need to come in, and as you may or may not be able to see, I have sanded away the back groove of where the fan sits. Well, quite frankly, the back groove is not really needed as, well, the fan's not going to go back fan is going to go forward. Not only that, it allows for the extra clearance for the thickness of the tube going around the outside of the fan unit. And as you can see on the wing saddle, I also did the same thing. And if you look for those of you that uh, may or may not have the shipping damage when you get it where this little tab's broken off, you can see the two little carbon fiber rods through where I sanded that uh, attached this piece back on. And, even if this isn't broken off, I actually recommend this because it just adds a little extra strength to the back section of the wing to uh, help hold it in place. Anyhow, as you can see, I sanded it off so that it allows the clearance on the, on the wing saddle as well as on the inside. Now, all I usually do with these, and I do this on several of my different EDFs, is the nice thing about the coaster board is a little flexible. For those of you that use Mylar or Lexan, you can very easily do this as well. Take it and just start feeding it in. Because it's nice and flexible, you can fold it into an oblong and then just gently feed it back. Now notice the notch. The notch is to allow the motor wires to go through the thrust tube and connect to the ESC wires. And now that this is in place, you rotate your notch towards down. One well, of the other things you can notice too that I did and some of the other users have mentioned that they have done is they've widened the trough here. These are your two wires for your elevator and rudder servos. You widen the trough to allow these wires to sit flat. Once you plug the wires in, it allows them to sit flat three abreast. No issues, no worries, easy install of the fan. Now you just slide the thrust tube back and you see it sticking out the back end. Just take the fan, drop your fan in, connect up your wires. Fan will, we have to play with this a little bit. But the nice thing again about the flexibility of Mylar is, or the uh, Mylar or poster board or whatever you choose to use, you can bend it, move it, do whatever you need. Slip the fan in, bam, fan's in its stock location. It's not completely sitting down right now because the wires are not hooked up. And then once it's in place, you can actually take and slide the thrust tube back over the front or the back of the fan unit. Now, sometimes you may run into an issue where it's not wanting to slide easily up over the fan unit. 
Well, what I can use is I have a frosting knife, or you can even take and use a, another handy tool that I have. And I have a very, very long piece of carbon fiber. As you can see, very long, stick it right up the tailpipe, and because of the concave shape that I've sanded on this, and this is also for sanding ducts once an aircraft's put together, um, you can take this and feed it around the inside of the tube, and it'll pop it out to the diameter of the fan, and you should be able to push it on from the back. Now, for those of you that may have already installed your tail cone, one of the nice things about the materials that we use for the thrust cones is that, again, very flexible, pliable, and you can just pop it on or, you know, form it to an oblong or actually roll it up to where it slides right on or rolls right into where you need it to. Now, on this, for those guys that, again, already have glued their tail cone on and don't want to go through the hassle of cutting it off just to put a thrust tube in, no worries. Take yourself a regular sheet like this. Take, roll it up nice and small. Roll it into the tip again. Put the board with a little less on the wanting to roll up. This is, but it can still very easily do so, and after a little bit, it will eventually get to the point where it will go right in. Nice thing is, you roll it up. Slide it into where you want, slide it all the way down to where it's back at the back of the fan unit. Let go. It'll expand to the diameter of the exhaust pipe, tail cone. And then you can actually pull it back around to match the diameter of the fan on this end. Once you've got it matched on this end, tape it to the fan. And then what you can do is what I did on this one is once it's set to that diameter, then what you can do is take your scotch tape, painter's tape, electrical tape, whatever you're going to choose to hold the thrust tube in place, take it, and again, with that frosting, frosting knife or this nice long piece of carbon fiber or even a long uh, standard head screwdriver, take, attach the piece of tape to the end of it, stick it all the way in, and then pull it back to where you want it to be, stick it up against it on the seam, and then get it in place enough to where you can pull the screwdriver off and then take the screwdriver on the smooth side and just smooth it down. Again, having, having something like I have right here helps immensely in this because it's already shaped concave, as you can see, to form to the mold of the contour of the inside of the duct. This is just my nice little way that I personally choose to do exhaust cones. This one was done initially by taking the rolled up poster board, inserting it through the tail end of the plane, and then the tape method from inside. Once that's done, tail coat can be popped off, band can be pulled out, and you can pull it out just like I just inserted it. And you can take it, and again, just like you put it in there, that's your ESC wires. And again, the nice little feature of the poster board or mylar, lexan, whatever you choose to use, is that you can bend it, form it, and whatever else you want, and pull it right back out. As you can see, it doesn't really mess up the inside. The outside's a little wrinkled, but the inside, because I choose to use the smooth part on the inside, really doesn't get messed up at all. Not enough to where it's going to affect anything. So, for those of you out there, that's my first tube install. I tell you my thrust tubes. And I'd also like to cover, for those of you that are wondering out there, the programming cards that we're talking about on the groups that you can use, in case you don't know, for programming the speed controller. These are the cards right here. These are the cards that you can use to program it. I found this out firsthand by using the instructions for a turn GESC. These will work as well. These also make it much simpler than stick programming to program the ESCs. Thank you, and I hope this helps.